but for the most for the doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. B, good doctrine, 1 Timothy 6, verse 3. My doctrine, 2 Timothy 3, verse 10. D, profitable for doctrine, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. Adorn the doctrine, 1, no, Titus 2, verse 10. Yeah. And you also gave us on B, good doctrine. Um, Okay. I can't argue with that at all. I have a little different answer, but I think you're very right. And okay, what's your answer? My answer is, in his belief that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I had to be bold in Christ, tell others of Jesus' love, witness to others, and share the gospel. Oh, good. I had something totally. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. I have something else. No matter how bad you have been, through the grace of God, there is hope. Yes, because when, after I read that link, I answered it a different way. I just realized it. Hear this. This is the answer to that question. Don't hesitate to ask forgiveness. It will be granted. And then repent. Very good. Do you agree with that? Oh, definitely. Okay. Anyone have anything to add to that? All right. Then we'll go on to number four. What charge did Paul give to Timothy? Number four. I got to trust. Um, Trust. Hold on to faith. And faith. Faith. Remain faithful. Right. Remain faithful. Uh, I, I um, pay no attention to fables and endless genealogies, and teach no other doctrines. Is two things I put down to the end. Tell certain men. Not to teach false doctrine, nor devote themselves to yeah. myths and yeah. genealogy. Actually, yes. actually the, Janet, you hit on the theme of the, the, really the whole letter here is false prophet. Don't allow false teachers to succeed. Right. Right. Okay. Speaking of false teachers. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but I think, you know, the whole thing, they're using the word shipwreck. Which means ruined faith. Which means ruined faith. Some people <laughs> have refused to act as their conscience showed them, as their faith leads them to believe. They have done what they know to be wrong. This has a damaging effect on their trust in God. It is like a ship that hits the rock. The ship sinks. So they have ruined their faith. Yeah, he I, knew a lot about shipwrecks. Paul knew a lot about shipwrecks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was, yeah. Okay, so. Pastor, I, I have one from my footnotes. By here. not following your faith, simply that's the answer, right, Betty? Rejecting your faith, same thing. scary and mostly mostly fun <laughs> so well how is the bump on your gluteus maximus <laughs> it's okay but last night every time i wanted to turn over in bed i'd mm. shriek in pain really yes is that uh, bad huh yeah well, it's fine weren't you it's... lucky not to break a bone yeah it's there's a technique to it you have to you learn to you figure out what to do. You gotta kind of rise up in the tube a little bit, but or, or get bigger tubes maybe, or tuck a cushion, <laughs> put a cushion on. I don't know. Are you in for it again? Uh, for swimming, maybe not for the tubing, but definitely for the swimming part. It was lovely. 
You got a big black and blue spot? I didn't check. <laughs> I didn't check. That wasn't as much of a worry as Alyssa tumbling over backwards. Yes. But, uh, and she is a certified lifeguard, but even so, um, you know, you see in a strong current like that, that it's, uh, I should have gone the other way. How did I miss that turn off? You were tubing. I am mentally tubing, yeah. Well, this is all right. It'll clear up. I know, it was very fun, and it was fun to do it with Alyssa and Carrie and have our... <laughs> so we had a nice, a nice family day. David had the day off. No, he didn't have the day off work. No, he went into work at four in the morning. And then he was out at three, so that's why he was able to go. like that where you're surrounded by trees and <laughs> blue sky and you know so so beautiful not an artificial pool right and it's it's uh and pool, pools are nice i wouldn't object to having a pool but uh, it's really really nice to be outdoors like that Does that little boy live in the apartment upstairs? Yes, he's oh, cute, cute, isn't he? Yeah, adorable. Yeah. Handsome little guy. Yeah, what's his name? I think it's Giovanni. Giovanni. There you are, Seventh yeah. Day. Good for you. Oh, people there. All over churches are being sold and turned over and turned into businesses, and yet the Seventh Day is building a new church. Good for them. their success too. Uh, the youth, uh, they start them early and they stay the seventh day and their their comradeship and their so many prayer groups and so many uh, praise services and so many uh, fellowship meals together vegetarian, uh, the uh, the strengths of the, the whole church, they're really, I think, the fastest growing church in the world. Wow, no kidding. That is interesting. Uh, their uh, evangelism, uh, their uh, missions, they're all over the world. They're, they're in all but 20 countries, something like 200 countries. 
in the world. Uh, they're extremely fundamentalist. Uh, the Bible is right and that's all there is to it. Yeah, it does seem to be the fundamentalist churches that are growing, either those or the mega churches yeah. that are promising a material yes. wealth, as you know, like some of those churches that have thousands, they sort of have a message of uh, uh, equating Christianity with overall success. They're zero Bible studies. They really get into it. They, oh, you've been to one, so you know. Yeah, no, it was a nice, nice Bible study. Yeah, a lot of people participating, which was. Oh good. yes, and and yeah. uh, they feel very deeply about it. We are going to Chinese dinner. Isn't that nice? Yeah, are you it's hungry? Exciting. I am hungry. Yeah. Andrew made uh, pancakes this morning, but that's a while ago now. Uh, so. There it is, right there. Yep. Uh, where are we, folks? We're on Route 9, the Albany-Manhattan Post Road, and we're in Kindahook, Malaysia. That's a thought. We, had, we do have life jackets. Brandon have a job that you know of, the, your neighbor? Well, well, look at this place. Can you see this place? Yep. Yeah. Round place. Wow. Wild. Oh, now we're going toward Nassau. Yeah, we're, this is Malden Street. Well, he said he had a job, but that was must go. What were those flowers? Uh, what did they look like? I didn't notice. Oh. Orange? No, white. No, I didn't see. Welcome to town of Nassau. Home again, home again, jiggity jog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now at least I had a friend that lived here in this house. This is like from the 1700s. Nice house. Nice house. Nice what did they do? Hmm? Is, wasn't that Jefferson Hill Road? Yeah, that was Jefferson Hill. But this will take us into town. Oh, I know, yeah. yeah. This is Malden Street. Yeah. It was a Malden Bridge. Many people pronounce it Melden. Oh, really? Melden? Do you remember a book called Malden Bridge? Uh, Back around the 50s. Malden Bridge. No, I wouldn't have been reading that. <laughs> you know? I wouldn't have been reading books yet. Malden Bridge. What was it about? I don't know. I think it was Barr. Somebody who had been in the army. Came from Malden Bridge, or I don't know. Fought, fought at Malden Bridge. Was it a historic battle site? Yeah, all that's missing. I don't know. Hmm. Ooh, big car. I can look it up. You want me to look it up on my phone? Uh, yes, please. Uh, well, we 
get back to town. I'll look it up. The trees are beautiful. Wow. The whole area is beautiful. Now this is rental coming. Yes. Oh, isn't this pretty? What a declivity. This is newly paved here. This is a smooth ride. Now imagine if instead of being in this car, you're just floating along on a tube. <laughs> and this road is a creek. With, <laughs> and it's windy. And there are trees on either side. <laughs> and every now and then you hit a bump. <laughs> pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Yes. Only you don't really have to steer. In fact, you can't steer. <laughs> you just go where the current takes you. Oh, now I love this road. Check out this house. What? Oh, this is a new road for me. This is Crossway. This is between 203 and Malden. But look at this place in here to the right. Yeah. Isn't that a beauty? Boy, they keep that well. Yeah, they do. Oh, gee, I'd hate to clean that. <laughs> Oh, isn't that a I that. wonder what the history of that one is. I don't know, but see, I love to see that. I think if a house has been standing for several hundred years, oh, it's yes, worth sir. the effort to keep it going. And I then, wonder what. And then you hear some of the newer buildings that are not any good after 30 years. They've got problems. Can you find out the history of that house? Uh, maybe. I'm going to ask Kurt. Oh. And here's another beauty. This one, a little simpler design, but still very beautifully kept. I wonder what the history of that one is. Looks like it doesn't traditional look like salt firm. Box. It does look like firm. It's a field. Oh, and with a big uh, deer in it. Now this is a very narrow road. And uh, I assume it's uh, Nassau, don't you? Yeah. yeah, we're in NASA. We're about to come out on 203. You'll you'll see right away where we are. It's a crossroad, crossway they call it. <laughs> and it's very exciting when Carrie's driving and we're coming around this corner. <laughs> you see how slowly I go, like five miles an hour. <laughs> and she she's There's like, a road that you haven't been on that I'm gonna tell you about and I never want to go on to again. Oh which <laughs> never. Which one is that? Well, it in, starts in Malden Bridge. There's St. Mary's Cemetery. There, so now we're back on 203 Village of Nassau. And it's a driveway. You think you're going into a person's house, and, and it is a driveway. But you drive by the house, and it turns into a road. And mm. as narrow as can be, one car width, and it goes along a ridge. Oh, in Malden Bridge? It goes from Malden Bridge up to 203. Oh, yeah, I've been on it, I think, with Cliff and his hay wagon. Oh! <gasps> yeah. <laughs> it's a road that's only open certain months of the year. Is it? Like it's closed? It's open from May to October and closed in the winter? Well, I would think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the road he took us on in the hay wagon, if you could imagine. And you're up above the Kinderhook? Is it the way Kinderhook? Up high. Oh, way up high. Way up high. And the, and the brook yeah. is way down. Yeah. And the stream is way down. I think it's the same road. Beautiful, but oh. scary. Yeah, and then it comes out into a farm. Yeah. It comes out into a person's farm, mm -hmm. and into a driveway, and onto Route 203. Right. Yeah, Cliff knows all the roads around here, all the neat places, at least the ones you can go on in the hay wagon. <laughs> Good morning, folks. The Advertiser. July 9, 2015, Anno Domini. The year of our Lord. Glendora Vegetarian Club. Eight-year-old Clint says 
I'm vegan because I like meeting and petting animals. I don't want them to die. It hurts them to be killed. It hurts them feelings to be locked up. I don't want people to do this to animals. I want everybody to be vegan. I don't want people to eat animals. I don't know yet what I'm going to do about it. But I want to tell everyone that the animals want to do fun things. Men who eat animals, I don't know why they do that. Maybe they have not watched the animals play. Maybe the men need to have more fun. Maybe they forget that everyone wants to do fun things. Good for you, Clint. The Glendore Vegetarian Club meets the last Wednesday of every month at the NASA Free Library, 18 Church Street, Route 20. July 29th, the Hawaiian Vegetarian Society presents a doctor's study that people who followed a plant-based diet overcame heart disease, <clears throat> prostate cancer, diabetes, and colon cancer. Wow. Those who did not fail to recover. You are invited to our free food called Glendora at 518-610-5810. What did you have last time? Uh, we had sautéed tofu chunks, delicious, with mixed vegetables, broccoli and peas and bamboo shoots and carrots and the sweet sauce. Did it taste good? Well, it must have. It wasn't any left. Then we had vegan ice cream made out of coconut milk, chocolate, caramel, vanilla, chocolate mint. Did they like it? There wasn't anything left. How many people involved? About ten. Did you know that ampersand, the symbol ampersand, which means etc. and so forth and on and on, that's a corruption of the real phrase, which is and her say and and per p e r say s e and per se means by itself through itself so it's and by itself and by itself and by itself and by itself. So by itself it repeats itself. 
That's what by itself means, repeats itself, right? Isn't that interesting? And, per se, and. You can go to bed at 7.15 last night and sleep all night long. And dot com sleeps on the alvines some of the time. And purrs and purrs and purrs. Wake up at 4.50 in the morning, 10 minutes before the alarm goes off. And you're full of good energy and good sleep and good rest. And that's like being filled with the Holy Spirit. And you say, what are you going to do today? Well, you say, the first thing I'm going to do today with this 10 minutes, I'm not going to think about myself for this 10 minutes. I don't get up until 5 a.m. the alarm goes off. So this 10 minutes I'll use thinking only of God and the universe and others. I won't use it for ego and I won't use it to think about evil. So what do you do when you get up at 5 a.m.? Well, you go to the bathroom, you get washed and you get dressed and you make the bed and you tidy the house and you make sure that dot com has good spring water and that you're drinking good spring water. This is Gannett, USA Today. And then you take care of the rubbish, make sure it's taken care of, and of the recycle, make sure that you recycle everything that you can, and you make sure you take care of the compost. You make sure that all the organics go into the ground, go back to the ground and take return to the ground what you took out of the ground, right? And then what do you do? Well, feed the animals. That's the most important thing you do all day. You give the animals at least one package of crackers a day. And you give them crackers because you don't like to give them leavened bread because you don't like leavened bread because the yeast get all ready to live and then they're put in the oven and killed. Then what do you do? Then you sit down and feed Dot Com her vegan food or her vegetarian food with brewer's yeast, not brewer's yeast, but nutritional yeast on it. And then you sit at the desk. And that's solar energy, S-O-U-L-A-R, solar energy. And you listen to God. God, the universe, and others. And you listen and listen. And you get great, great thoughts. Great excitement. Then you do the joy book, and the joy book lists the blessings of yesterday, the blessings that you were to people and others, and the blessings that others were to you. In fact, you really find out that you didn't do anything, it was others who did it all. And dot com sits with you and eats a little while and then goes over in a rocker then comes back and drinks her water out of the side of the cup, and then goes back for a nap in her rocking chair, and then comes back to eat her vegetarian food. Well, what do you want? What do you want in life? Let's make a list, folks, of what you want in life. What is life all about? Please tell me. We've been talking to each other that life is all about God, the universe, and helping others. And we want the lion and the lamb to dwell together. We want the bear and the cow to graze together. 
we want the little calf and the little goat to lie down and be safe and live their lives in freedom and independence. We want to be on God's holy mountain and we want the earth to be filled with the knowledge of God. And what is the knowledge of God? Tell it to me, please. All I can think of is God, universe, and others. That's all I can think of. And so after you, why do you have the God time? Well, the first thing in the day you get up and do the essential things that have to be done to lay the foundation of the day. And you do that before the telephone starts to ring and the doorbell starts to ring. You do that. You look at last year's calendar and you think of what has happened in the past year and have you done right? And is this year better than last year? And you keep a record, again, of the blessings and your thankfulness for them, your gratitude for them. Then I look at the Glendora Vegetarian Club every day to see what can be done to help people to stop putting animals in their mouths and to help people find the way. And then you write down the list of things that God, the universe, and others want you to do today. The telephoning that you have to do. The details that you have to do. What you should eat. Be careful of what you should eat. First, Genesis 29, you eat. The seeds, the grains, the fruit. And then you have to do the in-mail and the out-mail. You have to do things for others through your correspondence out and do things for others for your correspondence in. That includes you, Los Alamos Public Access TV, and Gene in uh, New Mexico. Thank you for sending copies of the TV show on DV Cam to go to Queen's Public Access TV where they don't take uh, DVD discs and where they don't take digital file. They don't take the shows by computer. The in-mail from uh, Friend Seki of the American Buddhist Study Association. And an interesting thing there, they're having their sixth commemoration of a bronze statue of a Buddhist leader, a leader of peace and tranquility, folks. And it was in Hiroshima. And it survived. And the people there in Japan wanted it sent to America. And it is on Riverside Drive at the Buddhist Study Center, the Buddhist Library. In a house where Marion Davies used to live. In a house that apparently William Randolph Hearst either built or bought or something. And it's four or five floors. It's a townhouse and very, very rich section of Riverside Drive on the Hudson River. So you do your in-mail and your out-mail. And then the rest of the day, you look at events, events that you can go to or people that you can invite out to eat a Chinese meal with 
uh, sautéed tofu chunks and mixed vegetables. Delicious. And their sauce. Or you go to events and see where you can help and contribute to the community. And where you can help people looking for the ultimate and contribute anything that you can to help. Can you think of anything more to say? Make sure you do the regimen of saintly eating. com. are you lying on the list of what to talk about here? Could you please just get up a little bit, see if I can find that list? No, nope, you weren't. But you do want more food. That's nice that you eat in those small portions. I had some jokes to tell you, and I listed them all on a piece of paper. Let me go turn off a camcorder and find those jokes for you. And then today's hymn. Here's the start of the God list. Uh, God time starts around 6 a.m. after all those uh, 10 things are done. And then that's the God list. And after the God list, Oh, I keep track of the expenses, the money in and the money out. And uh, then God meditate him in prayer and exercise the body and take care of the rubbish and the recycle and the compost and feed the animals. That's the greatest thing all day is feeding the animals. That's the greatest thing that gets done all day. Oh, and yesterday... Uh, it rained, and you couldn't feed the animals because the crackers would all get soggy. And so later in the day when I came back from Chinese dinner with Sandy, we were sitting out in paradise, out there in that beautiful scenery, Sandy and I, and we heard, <coughs> and it was a blue jay saying, you haven't fed us yet today. Isn't that cute? I'll be right back. It was on the floor, our friend Gravity. The force equals the mass times the acceleration. Our friend was talking to his friend, and he said, when the doctor operated on me, he left a sponge inside. And the friend says, a sponge inside? Isn't that uncomfortable? And the man says, no, it just makes me thirsty. One woman is talking to another, and she says, did your dad die a natural death? And the woman says, no, he had a doctor. Doc, doc. I have a ringing in my ears. What'll I do? Doc, don't answer it. The doctor said, you take one of these pills every day and you walk a mile a day and at the end of the month, call me. So at the end of the month, the man called the doctor. He said, what do I do now? I'm out of pills and 30 miles from home.
What did the doctor do for you when, to, when you went to see him? He carefully took out his stethoscope and listened to my wallet. And I know that my son is going to grow, this woman says, I know that my son is going to grow up to be a doctor. Well, how do you know that? He's already collecting old magazines. Did the doctor give you a clean bill of health? No, he won't do that until my check clears. You've got a hymn for today, folks? With God we go to spread the joy of life. We win each day the happiness of love. We count our blessings. We give thanks. We give joy. Stop, stop the cruel. Stop, 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 stop the cruel. Well, how are... So the one thing you want in life is for people to have the joy of the Lord. So how do you do that? I can think of one thing. You can be it yourself. Start with yourself. Make sure you're that way. Right? Start with ourselves. Make sure we're that way. How else can you do it? It isn't so hard to get people to talk about God. It isn't so hard to get them off of the idle talk, the trivial talk. No ugly thought, no second level thought, no negative thought. It isn't hard. People like to talk about God. Just ask them a question about God. You could also say, take a list, take a joy book like this, and you could write on it, let's make a list. Let's make believe that you could have anything you want. Now, what do you want? Oh, health. What do you want? Oh, money. Uh, what do you want? Oh, and this won't come out in the, this form. I want love. I want people to love me. That's usually what's missing. I want more love. I want people to love me more, take care of me, and appreciate me. How do you do that? By loving others, taking care of others, and appreciating others. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Well, anything else that you want to add to our morning meditation? Morning, M O R. N-I-N-G, not M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. I guess not. God be with you. That's goodbye is the contraction of God be with you. <laughs>